exciting is this? Pizza while you're camping? It's crazy. Hello and welcome to my channel. I am Amanda. If you are new to my channel, my channel is all about camping, outdoor travel and activities, and then a lot of camp cooking. And that is exactly what we are doing today. You asked for more Dutch oven recipes, so today I'm gonna show you how I make Dutch oven pizza when I'm out camping. I know pizza sounds like something that's quite fancy for camping, but this is actually not that complicated. Before me, I have all of the camp kitchen gear, and the ingredients you need to make this pizza, I'm gonna show you step-by-step step exactly how I do it. If you're new to Dutch oven cooking, I would not attempt this one on your first meal. If you're new and you want something easy, I would go with a Dutch oven nachos, and I will link to that video in the description below. But if you're ready to get a little ambitious with your camp cooking, this pizza is so good. I'm going to cook this Dutch oven pizza with briquettes in the Dutch oven. So you need briquettes. Don't skimp on the briquettes here. I only ever buy the Kingsford ones now. I've tried cheaper ones before and they just do not work. So Kingsford is the way to go. And then you're also going to need, of course, your Dutch oven. I have a four quart Dutch oven and that's what we're gonna use to make a couple little personal sized pizzas. But this recipe would also work if you have a bigger Dutch oven. And then I have a chimney starter to start the briquettes and get them nice and hot to cook things with. In addition to that, I have a lid lifter, which I'm gonna use to lift the lid of the Dutch oven, fire gloves here. But I have these to help me move the pizza into the Dutch oven and just keep my hands safe as I'm working around the heat. And then lastly for gear, I have these tongs that I'm going to use to actually move the hot briquettes around uh, to heat the Dutch oven. We're gonna be making this on parchment paper. We'll talk about this a little bit more and just why this is so nice and convenient. So you're gonna need that as well. For this pizza, we of course need some pizza dough. You want this to come to room temperature. So one of the first things I'm going to do is actually take it out of this packaging and just let the dough come just to warm up to basically room temperature. Cold dough is a lot harder to stretch. In fact, it doesn't really keep its shape very well. So that's kind of the first thing that I would recommend doing while you're getting all of your other stuff ready to go. Now, of course, we also need some pizza sauce. So I have that and mozzarella cheese, and I'm gonna put some basil. So I just have some basil in here that I cleaned and washed at home. And I'm probably not even gonna take out the cutting board. I'm just gonna rip off pieces of basil, keep it simple, and then some olive oil. I was recently at a friend's house. We were doing a little like fire in the backyard and just hanging out and she asked everyone what their favorite pizza was. I thought about it and I was like, just cheese. I just like cheese pizza. <laughs> Maybe with a little bit of basil, but that's really my favorite. And so that's what we're making today. But of course you can bring other toppings that you want. So cooked bacon, cooked sausage, peppers, onions. And I would just cook that at home and then just put it in the cooler and it's ready to go when you're at camp. I'm gonna get the briquettes started because they take about a half an hour to fully heat up until they're ready to be used. So in that time, I'm gonna go get the pizza ready. We're gonna be cooking this pizza hot. So I'm gonna fill this thing up with briquettes. One of the nice things about using briquettes is that I can get an exact temperature in my Dutch oven that you can repeat when you go out there and do this. Instead of cooking it with a fire and the coals from a fire, you don't really actually know how hot the Dutch oven is getting. So that's why we're using the briquettes for this recipe. Ugh. Here we go. Ugh. Okay. Ugh. Briquettes are ready to be used when they get white and ashy. That's kind of how you know they're done preheating. Normally I would put this on top of a grill grate uh, so you can get your hand under there to light it easily. But anyway, they are going now. Now it's time to get the pizza ready. I have my dough and it has been coming to room temperature. This is enough dough for two pizzas and you wanna make the size of your pizza obviously the correct size so that it fits your Dutch oven. Like I said, I have a four quart Dutch oven, so I'm gonna make a pizza that I can easily put in there. So I'll get two pizzas out of this pizza dough. I just got the store-bought pizza dough because 
I'm not gonna be making pizza dough out here, but you can make it at home, of course, and then bring it along. When I put it out on this parchment paper, I put a little bit of olive oil on top of it just so that the top doesn't dry out. And I also have somewhere here, a little bit of extra flour in case things are getting really sticky, but this dough actually feels fine to handle, and so I don't really need that right now. Now I'm going to shape the dough to fit into my Dutch oven, put some pizza sauce on it, mozzarella cheese, and it's ready to go. I prefer a thin crust pizza, so this is a kind of a perfect crust for me. One of my tips is do not put too much sauce on your pizza. I am a over saucer, <laughs> but the sauce adds a lot of moisture, and so if you put too much, uh, you just don't get like a good crispy crust. So probably go a little bit thinner than you think with the sauce. When I was at my friend's house having the fire that I was telling you about earlier, she asked us, the question of like, what's your favorite pizza? Because apparently in the state of Utah, there was a poll done and Hawaiian pizza was the number one. <laughs> and quite a few people in the group said that that was their favorite pizza. I am not into Hawaiian pizza with the pineapple and the, the ham. I wouldn't say I hate it, but it's definitely not my top pizza. I'd love to know in the comments below, do you like Hawaiian pizza? What's your favorite kind of pizza? Ah, I'm a simple gal. Cheese pizza, it is for me. <laughs> the briquettes are almost done. While we're waiting, I thought I would quickly mention a couple little safety notes here. So do not stress or rush through this process. Really try to stay organized and make sure that you don't accidentally touch the hot cast iron. We're gonna be dealing with really hot cast iron. You don't wanna be rushing through the process and accidentally touch the hot cast iron. I have burnt my hand so bad on a cast iron pan. I was making brownies at home and I just grabbed the handle and burnt my hand so bad I couldn't sleep. Like I was just laying with it on an ice pack. And so you don't wanna be doing that like ever, but especially when you're out camping. So I just wanted to quickly mention that, a little word of caution. That's why we have these fire gloves to make sure that we really protect our hands and our arms as we're dealing with the hot cast iron. As you can see, the briquettes are white and ashy. And so we poured them out and we're preheating the Dutch oven now. We wanna put the pizza right into a really hot cast iron Dutch oven so we get that crispy crust. I have about 10 on the bottom and then 23 or so on top. Uh, that's a little bit more than 450 for this four quart Dutch oven. Of course, if you have a bigger or smaller Dutch oven, you're gonna need a different amount of briquettes to create the same heat. So I'm gonna preheat this for just a few minutes. We just want the cast iron to get nice and hot. And then I'm gonna move my table over here and just transfer the pizza right into the Dutch oven with the parchment paper. So that's kind of the beauty of using the parchment paper is it makes it really easy to get the pizza into the hot Dutch oven. If you're making a massive pizza, you gotta be careful because it might not work very well. So um, I do this with my four quart. Like I said, I think this would work with, you know, an eight quart, but I probably wouldn't make a bigger pizza than that <laughs> with the parchment paper method of transfer because it might break on you. <laughs> so I'm moving the table closer so that I can just quickly transfer the pizza into there. I'm gonna use the lid lifter to remove my lid. I wanna keep all of these briquettes right on there. For this step, I'm gonna use these fire gloves so that I don't accidentally touch the cast iron with my hands. Just be extra safe. And then just use the parchment paper, get a good hold of it and then right into the Dutch oven. My pizza is a little bit too big, but you can see it works just fine. I'm gonna put this lid right back on there. I'm gonna let this cook for at least like 15 minutes and then check on it to see how it looks and if it needs more time, obviously I'll leave it in there. And that's pretty much it. 
It's getting a little bit cold out here, so we started a fire to hang out around, but the pizza is done, I think. I haven't checked on it yet, but it's been about 15 minutes. So let's remove the lid, see what we're working with. Oh, that's a good looking pizza. Looks so I just use my hands like this and kind of bring it right on over to the cutting board. That's why having the fire gloves is so nice because yeah, you can just get your hands in there and you don't have to worry about burning your hands. But now we get to look, let's get this off. Parchment paper. Look at this cute little pizza. Got some good browning on the bottom. So good. <laughs> I almost want the basil. Hold on. I brought a little bit of basil. Just just one. <laughs> no, I'm just kidding. Put a little fresh basil on here. Ah, oh, yes. Oh yeah. How exciting is this? A pizza while you're camping? It's crazy. This is a super thin crust, which I love thin crust pizza. Mm. Nick and I have devoured that pizza. There's only one piece left, which I'm about to eat. And then I'm gonna make another one, but I hope this has been helpful. These are kind of all my tips and tricks for just making Dutch oven pizza in the simplest way and the easiest way that I've found to do it. So make sure to check the description box below. There will be a link to my blog where you can actually print off this recipe and take it with you. There'll be step-by-step -step photos and hopefully answer any other questions that you have. But if you like this video, and you want to see more Dutch oven cooking from me, make sure to comment below, give the video a like, and subscribe to my channel so that you don't miss a video. I'll see you in the next one.